What's up guys, it is October and I wanna talk about the baits that I think are really gonna be key for this time of year. And so I'm gonna break down my top five because it's really, really tough in October depending on where you're at. It's amazing up north because you have those colder nights, those colder to water temps, really getting those fish chewing. But down south, if you get a warming trend, it can really make or break the day. Because of how those cold fronts affect those fish, it can really change how they position and how they work. And you still have a lot of fish spread out. So I'm gonna break down my five favorite baits that are gonna help you catch more fish in different water columns and in different sections of the country. And we're gonna break it all down right now. So from the last video leading into this video where we talked about September baits going into October baits now, those fish are still chasing bait. And they're really, really, really chasing bait if you're up north and they're really starting to chase bait down south. You'll have fish busting all over the water column from up high, down low, chasing bait because that water's starting to flip-flop. You're starting to get that turnover and that's something you have to be aware of. Now those fish that were once in the deeper water column using that colder temperature can now be anywhere in between. And so forward-facing sonar really starts to come into play this time of year because you don't have to necessarily side image fish on ledges or side image fish on hard spots, those fish are now starting to roam a lot more and chase that bait. And so that's really what's gonna be implementing my bait choice is going to be the bait fish that they are chasing. Whether it's herring, we're in North Carolina right now, big herring fishery, or it's shad, big gizzard shad, small shad. And one thing that I want you to not get caught up in, and it's something that everybody gets caught up in, is the fish busting chasing bait. Because what happens is you have a lot of fish chasing bait and a lot of fish busting, and everybody gets the thought that they're chasing small shad, the young of the year shad, and they do. They totally do. You will have a ton of fish chasing those small shad, those small thread fins, but the problem is most oftentimes it is the smaller fish that are chasing those. And so all these guys get worked up throwing small liplesses, small crankbaits, so a couple of the other baits that I'm gonna talk about today, and they start catching fish, but it's kind of a trick. You're catching fish that are really, really small and you're going through a ton of numbers. Well, that's because those smaller fish aren't as smart. They're up there chasing that small bait. It doesn't give them the reward that they want. And those bigger fish, well, there will be a couple of them up there, are most oftentimes still a little bit off the bank, a little bit deeper chasing those bigger shad. So with that, we're gonna dive right in to bait number one. That is going to be a topwater because we have to talk about it because there are a ton of fish blowing up on bait. You have to have a topwater on deck to try to cover some of those fish that blow up in an instant out behind the boat. And you want to have one that you can cast a long distance. So this is a six cents catwalk right here. I have it in a natural shad color. It's called Shad Burst. Throw it on 50 pound braid on an eight to one gear ratio reel with a seven foot moderate action cranking rod made by Arc. I will have all of the stuff linked down below as always. But what I like about this is I have it on an Arc G5 and that 50 pound braid, I can cast this thing literally till my spool is empty. And that's something that I can't say about most combos. And so this is just a bait that I'm gonna have on deck all day just for the off chance that they come blowing up. You know, it's a great time early morning to go down the banks and throw some of these baits because at night those fish will push the bait up shallow because you'll start to see that bait flicker and shallow. And so those bass will be there and it's a good way to get a kicker. It's a good way to just get a couple good fish to give you some confidence. And hat. it's honestly probably my favorite way to catch bass, uh, just throwing that big top water and having those fish come up on it. What I do like about this catwalk is it's keeled and it sits in the water a little bit better. And so those fish get it a whole lot better because they can see it a whole lot more. And so that's gonna be bait number one. And you'll notice it's a little bit bigger. It's not a super small bait because again, I'm trying to target those tournament quality fish. So I'm looking for those fish that want a bigger meal. And so that's why I went with that. You could also throw a small popper mixed in with that, but I like that bigger top water still this time of year to try to get a bigger than average size bite. And so going with that bait is bait number two. And this is gonna be one that's gonna be on my deck at all times. And that is going to be an underspin. Specifically, this is a fish head underspin right now. Um, it's a, one of my favorites. It started out being one of my favorites, one of the first baits that I actually caught bass on. And so I like the underspin, not just a swim bait because I can fish it deeper because it has a thinner head on it. And I can also get that extra flash out of that blade on there to help separate my bait from the bait that is in that school. It puts off a little bit more vibration. Right here, I have a six cent swim bait on the back of this. And what I've done is I've actually cut the tail. You can see that there's no paddle tail on the back. I've actually cut the tail off of it. And what that does is it gives it tighter shimmy, which is what the bait is doing, especially some of this small bait. 
And what it does, it also helps me reel it faster. So I can cover water faster and it'll sink faster. And so now I can cover water, fish it faster, and preferably get more bites with it. And I'm throwing this on a spinning rod, but you could also throw it on a bait caster. I'll have the combo link down below. But the key is going to be light line. I have this on six to 10 pound line, depending on if I have it on a bait caster, I'll run 10. But if I'm fishing on a spinning rod like I have here, I'll run braid to a fluorocarbon leader because it cuts through the water and actually lets that bait get deeper and allows me to fish that bait a little bit faster. But an underspin is just a super awesome bait because it catches smallmouth, largemouth, spotted bass, doesn't matter. And with that blade on there, it kind of gives it more of a big fish presence. And you find that you just catch a ton of fish on it from small fish to big fish. So it's kind of a confidence bait. Anytime I see those fish chasing bait in and around that bait. And that's just something that I really, really love to have on deck at all times with me. Because you're not always trying to catch a seven pounder. You're also trying to catch limit size fish or just, you know, catch fish to give you some confidence. And that's one of those baits that this time of year gives me a ton of confidence to throw. And so the next bait that kind of goes with that is going to be a jerk bait because you can't help but have a jerk bait on deck when they're chasing a ton of shad. But this jerk bait is special and I have two of them that I throw. I throw, this is a six cents provoke, but I also throw it in the DD model, which is like a plus 10 model. It's a deeper diver. But the key to this bait and what makes this bait so special is that it is completely silent. Other than the sound you get from the hooks, it is a complete silent bait and they make that in the silent version in the DD as well. And so with these fish being super, super pressured this time of year, if you get a day like today, take for instance, where it's flat calm out here, super sunny, they'll still eat that jerk bait, but now that silent takes the rattles away from it and they will eat it so much better because you get into those areas where there's been a lot of pressure, there's been a lot of other people fishing. Now you don't have to worry about scaring those fish with that noise because that's the first thing that's gonna deter those fish is the sound and you don't have to worry about that with this. And so if you're in clear water, that is going to be a must have. If you're not in clear water, they also make it with the rattles because if you're in a little bit dirtier water, you need to have a little bit of something to help those fish chase it, to find it and to key in on it. And the key to this bait, other than the no sound, is going to be the color I'm going to throw. I like a natural color, and then I also like uh, a shad style color. Um, just keeping a couple of different options available, so that way you can, if those fish are early in the morning, you can get a little bit more solid color. If you get some cloud cover, you can have a little bit more uh, solid color for those fish to really key in on, versus when you get really trans translucent, clear water, um, and you know, no wind, no waves. You want something that's going to be harder for those fish to see, so that way they can't key in on it as easy. Uh, so that way they don't reject it as fast. But that is a super, super key bait for me. You can cover a ton of water with that, fish it up to about 12 feet of water, which really in the fall is starting to break down a lot of the different water columns. Now, transitioning from bait a little bit, I want to have a bait on deck that I can do everything with, and that is going to be a jig. If you didn't talk about a jig in almost every month of the year, I don't really know what you're doing because a jig is just such a phenomenal bait and such a versatile bait that I can do everything with it and big fish will always eat a jig no matter if you're in Florida, Maine, Wisconsin, California, there will always be fish that will eat a jig and I can do a little bit of everything with it. I can flip grass with it, I can fish it around wood, I can fish it around rock and I can do whatever I want with it and the key is the jig that I throw. This is a divine hybrid by six cents. It has sort of a wedge style head, but it also is flat on the bottom, which is great for skipping this bait. It also has a meat hook on there that allows me to, when I set the hook on this fish, those fish are coming in the boat. And I pair that with the Z-Man Helicraw for a specific reason, because now I don't have to go through jig trailers. What I do is I super glue that jig trailer on there and now I can fish one trailer for the majority of a day. Whether Even if I'm skipping docks, getting the fire kicked out of this thing, it still does an amazing job at holding up to fish eating it, to all the above, and it just does everything that I need it to do. And the reason that I'm still throwing a jig is because not all fish are shad oriented. There's a big population of bass that still live on bluegill, perch, you know, crappie, and that's what I'm targeting with this jig. I'm gonna be up shallow for the most part, fishing hard spots, fishing shell beds, fishing around docks that are still left in the water, doing everything I can to try to catch fish that are chasing bluegill. Because again, those bluegill are getting shallow this time of year too. They're up there feeding, and so those largemouth, smallmouth, spotted bass are gonna be right up there with them. 
And it's also a great bait if you're fishing offshore because it's just something that you can put through every single type of cover and get away with. Now the last bait that I wanna talk about is one that really plays all times of year as well and that's going to be a drop shot. Now I have a tungsten weight on here this time of year because I like to feel hard bottom a little bit better and I like to fish it faster. Because those fish are so feeding oriented, they're so fast to eat, I want a heavier weight. So this is a tungsten weight from Fish USA. I'll have these linked down below. And what I've done is I open up the clip on the bottom so I can tie my line on there. And then I put a small bait fish. This is a Z-Man uh, shad style bait. You can see it's got teeth marks in it right there actually. Can't remember the exact name of this bait, but I'll have it linked down below. I think it's a finesse shads. But the key is going to be what's called power drop shot fishing. With that little bit heavier weight, what I'm able to do is actually cast that bait around and fish it a whole lot faster. Let it hit the bottom, shake it a couple times. If they don't eat it, move on. Or if you're up on the Great Lakes, that heavier weight allows me to drag it better and make better contact with the bottom. But this is going to be a bait that I'm going to have as a follow-up bait. If they chase a jerk bait, if they chase that underspin, if they chase that top water, I can pitch this in there. And it's also just going to be a bait that if you're up north, you have to have on deck. Even if you're down south, if you get into an area where you have a population of fish that all of a sudden you see a brush pile that they're in or a hard spot that they're on, now you can pitch this bait in there and really maximize the amount of fish that you're gonna catch out of it. It's also a great bait for around cover. It's also a great bait to just cover ledges, cover anything with. And that's why I have to have it on deck because some of these fish are keying in on that small bait. And sometimes if you get conditions like we have today, they want a little bit more finesse of a presentation. So that's something that you really have to have on deck. Now, going with this video, I'm gonna have a video linked up here where I break down my favorite schooling fish baits. And I think that's gonna be something that's really gonna play into your guys' wheelhouse because if you're watching this video, you're going fishing this time of year. And so that's something that's gonna play right into what you guys have going. So feel free to check that video out. Also smash that subscribe button to follow along with the regular content I have coming out. God bless you guys. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.